adding a radius server to your network environment, especially in support of a VPN, a virtual private network, gives you all sorts of really cool functionality. It gives you sophisticated authentication mechanisms, it gives you granular accounting and auditing control. It also really nicely integrates with Active Directory. When it comes to IT, we typically place all of those things in a category called things that are good. In this video, I'm going to show you how we build one. Hey everybody, Troy here. Welcome. Today I'm going to be deploying a RADIUS server in an Active Directory environment to support the authentication for a client-to-site VPN. Timestamps are in the description below. Feel free to jump around as you need or just stay with me through the whole video as we build this infrastructure piece by piece. First things first, let's get a look at my network topology. Now I'm running a series of virtual machines in the background and this is how they are configured. My ultimate goal with this exercise is to have a user logged in on some Windows 10 or Windows 11 workstation and I want that user to be able to connect to my Active Directory environment remotely using something we call a client to site VPN. Now, that VPN is going to be deployed on a Windows Server 2022 image running a server role called RAS, Routing and Remote Access Services. Now, in order to authenticate those users as they try to gain access to my domain, I'm going to have my RAS look to a network policy server on Windows Server 2022. That's going to be deployed as a RADIUS server. Now, that NPS, that Radius server is going to be in contact with the domain controller to authenticate users against the Active Directory database to ensure that only those users who are authorized are gaining access to the VPN. Now, using radius terminology, this machine is something we call the supplicant. That is the machine that is looking to be authenticated. Now, we're going to have that machine talk to the authenticator, which is my VPN, and that authenticator is going to reach out and be in contact with the AS, or the authentication server, which is going to confirm or deny whether this guy can actually authenticate. Now, I mentioned I wanted this to be as realistic as possible, and I'm going to be focusing pretty much all my time in this video on the left-hand side of this topology. You're probably thinking, and rightfully so, Troy, this isn't very realistic over here on the right. You're right. What I would characteristically have here is a cloud in the middle, and this guy's going to be behind some kind of router or firewall on his own private network. The point of this, however, is that nothing changes with respect to connectivity. This particular machine has to be able to access the public interface of my environment in order to create the VPN. And so all I've done here is cut out all the intermediary to emulate exactly the same thing. The other thing I want to point out is that this does not actually have to be a RAS server. I've chosen to use a RAS server to deploy my VPN, but this could be any VPN capable edge device. This could be a VPN capable router. This could be a firewall. Anything that will help me establish that client to site VPN connection can be my edge device. The point is, is that that device is going to be using the radius server to authenticate. Let's get to the configuration. Here's what I've done so far. I have deployed my domain controller using Windows Server 2022. I have given it a static IP of 10.10.10.1 and it is the domain controller for an environment called corp.acme.com. I have also deployed my base image of my Windows Server 2022 that will become my network policy server. This is joined to the domain and I've already taken care of that. I'm going to pick up right here by configuring my network policy server. Let's head over there. Pop over to my NPS. Now, as I mentioned, this is domain joined to corp.acme.com. I've given it a static IP of 10.10.10.2. And what I need to do now is deploy the NPS role so I can configure that to be my radius server. Now to deploy this server role, I'm going to go to my dashboard, I'm going to go add roles and features, and I'm going to make my way through the wizard for a role-based configuration, and I'm going to verify that my server name and IP address are properly populating. I'm going to hit next, and the what I want right here is called the Network Policy and Access Services. It's going to grab a series of management features to which I will simply hit next, next, and away I go with an install. Okay, now this will just take a moment and uh, it's not going to require a restart. I'm just going to pause the video here until this installation is complete. 
There we have it. That particular feature installation took on my machine about three to four minutes, uh, probably faster at your end because where I'm working, it is a Monday and we do know that things go slow on a Monday. I'm going to hit close and I'm going to review. Now I have this new NPAS, Network Policy Access Server set of tools. I'm going to pop over to my tools and you see that I have a series of options here. The one I want is my Network Policy Server. I'm going to hit that and up comes my dashboard. Now the first thing that I need to do is I have to ensure that this particular NPS can talk to my domain controller. What I'm going to do in order to do that is I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on this button called register server in Active Directory. I'm going to hit a button here and it warns me to authenticate users in Active Directory. I have to allow this NPS certain permissions and it's asking the domain controller to verify that. I'm going to click OK and done. Okay, now that particular authorization was critical because without that I can't actually have permission to talk to the DC and use its database as a verification. Before I do any more work, there's some fairly important housekeeping I need to do on my domain controller, including verifying the registration of this NPS server in Active Directory. To do that, I'm going to minimize my NPS server pop over to my domain controller and as you can see this is a regular run-of-the-mill DC on corp.acme.com. I'm going to pop to my Active Directory users and computers snap-in. Now the first thing I'm going to be able to do is verify in my corp.acme.com environment in the users category, I've got a set of pre-populated users. One of those is my RAS and IAS server security group. Pop in there, click on members, and you can see that registration resulted in my NPS server being placed in the security group called RAS and IAS servers. That's verified that the registration was successful. I now have one more very important piece of housekeeping to do on my domain controller. Remember my network policy server, my NPS, aka my radius server, is going to be looking to the domain controller for a list of users that are authorized to connect via VPN. To create that list of users, I'm going to create a security group and I'm going to put all the users who are authorized into that security group so my radius server can read it and use to determine who's allowed and who's not allowed to connect via VPN. Let's get that done. I'm going to move over to my top level of my AD users and computers. I'm going to create a new organizational unit. Now this is just some basic housekeeping everybody. How you do your or you design is completely unique to your environment. This is some of the best practices that I like to do when I am managing an environment. I create a top level OU and inside there I'm going to put an OU called, let's put this, we'll call this computers. Now inside here I'm going to apply another OU called, uh, let's go servers, this will be my member servers uh, and I'm going to also create an OU called uh, let's go workstations. Okay, now what this is going to allow me to do is in the future, I'm going to be able to apply specific group policy objects to the, u to the computers inside these nodes and that will allow me to granularly control the security on these particular devices. I'm going to grab my computer over here. There's my NPS server. I'm just going to do a very careful drag and accept the prompt and you'll see that now I've placed my NPS server in my server OU and now I can add some group policy to protect that with respect to my particular environment. I'm also going to create a OU called, let's go call it personnel. Okay, now this is where my users are going to live and I'm going to create a set of users that are going to be allowed to connect via VPN. Now all I'm going to do here is create a new user. Okay, and I'm just going to call this, I'm going to call this me. There we go, and I'm going to use my login as first initial last name at corp.acme.com. I'm going to remember that. That's called a realm, and we're going to need that when we actually connect our VPN. I'm going to hit next, give myself a password for this. Away we go, and next, there we go, there's a user. Now, let's create another user here. I'm going to create another user just so, oops, say that was a OU. New user is what I want, and I'm going to call this guy Bran. Flakes. Let's put that in there. Mr. B Flakes. He is going to also have virtual private network capability. He's going to be allowed to VPN in. Put another password on my user. 
There we go. Now I've got two users here who I want to have permissions to log in. Now, you see when I right click on here, I'm gonna click on the properties of this particular user and I'm gonna go to the dial-in tab and you're gonna see that by default, I have a network access permission selection and you can see that by default, his login is going to be controlled via NPS, which is the server that we just built. And so I'm going to leave that it's in, in its default state, but it's very important that it's set there because if we do deny, this will override the NPS. We're going to leave it and in its default. And if I go into the new user, me, same thing. That's my default settings. Excellent. Let's build that security group and I'm going to give these, I'm going to give this security name called VPN uh, access. Okay, so this security group is going to comprise members who are allowed to VPN in. This is a global security group. I'll click OK and I'm going to grab these guys here and I'm going to add them to a group called VPN access. Done. And they are there. I'm going to double click here. You can see the members. They are there. Now, what I've done here, everybody, is I've made sure that this particular user group right here is going to be the group that's going to be the security group that the NPS, the radius server, uses to determine if the user is on the list to get in via VPN. Back to our NPS we go. Now we are ready to configure our Radius client. So you'll see here that we have a series of nodes on the left and, and right out of the gate you can see that I have a standard configuration option for two fairly simple scenarios, the Radius server and 8021X. We'll do 8021X in a different video. For now I'm going to focus on Radius. I'm going to follow the wizard. I'm going to click on configure VPN or dial up and what I'm looking for is my virtual private connection. Connections. Okay, and what this will let me do is use this NPS server to authenticate a VPN connection. So I'm just going to call this my Acme VPN. Oh, oh, you'll see where that comes into play a little later. And now remember, in Radius parlance, this is a Radius server. The authenticator is the Radius client. That authenticator is my actual RAS server. So if I go take a look at my document, this is my radius server, this is my radius client, and this is something we call the supplicant. It is not a radius client. Lots of students often get that confused. So I need to assign the radius client to my particular NPS. I'm going to add this based on my IP. I'm going to call this my Acme RAS VPN, that's where we're going to go, and I'm going to create an IP address for this. Now this has to be the internal address of my particular server right here. You see my inside address is 10.10.254. My outside address, which is emulating public, it's a private address, but it's emulating public, and that's 172. I'm going to use my 10.10 address as my IP, so 10.10.10.254. You can see it matches my topology and I'm going to hit verify and now I need to resolve that address to make sure the NPS can talk to that radius client. I'm going to click OK and if I had specific templates to employ with respect to shared sequence I could do that here but I simply need to create a shared secret password. This is allowing the radius client to authenticate or to talk to the radius server. E C R E T capital P A S S. That's what I've typed. Secret pass. Ooh, secret. Obviously, we want something a bit more technologically challenging and safer than that, but for uh, demo purposes, that will work. I remember that it is secret pass, so where we go. Okay, now our RAS client is added and we are all set to go. So I'm going to hit next. And now we want to choose the authentication method for our supplicants. And so I'm going to choose extensible authentication protocol. Now we have a series of options here. The one that I'm going to use is the secured password, the EEP MS CHAP version 2. I could go further in here and customize some of the properties, but I'm not going to uh, worry about changing the defaults. I could check or uncheck this. This is another alternative when we do our actual workstation VPN. I'm going to leave it checked for now. It doesn't hurt to have it checked there. Hit next. And now which groups 
contain the user list that my Radius server needs to use. Well, fortunately, I built a group in my Active Directory and it was called VPN Access. Okay, that this security group contains Troy and Brandflakes and these are the people who are allowed to use VPN. By virtue of me specifically telling the Radius server, that's the database that they're gonna check. I'm gonna hit next and we have a series of IP filtering. Now, right now, feel free just to use the defaults. You could actually, as it says here, we can configure very specific filters here. At this point in time, I'm just gonna accept the defaults onto my encryption settings. Obviously, I want this to be as secure as possible. One of the reasons I'm using Radius, I'm gonna eliminate the weaker encryption options and say the only thing you can use is the MPPE 128 bit. Hit next. Now I have an option of customizing the realm. Now the realm is associated with the sign-in that the user will use on the workstation to actually create this VPN. You can customize this, but I'm happy with the defaults. There's two ways we can make this work once we get to actually configuring the VPN on the workstation. I'm gonna hit and accept the defaults. Next, I am now ready to complete the provision of my Radius server. I'm gonna hit finish and away we go. So that was pretty quick, that was pretty simple. I'm gonna now take a quick look here at a few of the options here. You can see I have a Radius client. That is my RAS server. I can right click, go to the properties. Now I can change the shared secret. I can customize the particular server and I can have multiple Radius clients here as well. I can take a look also and you can see that I have a connection request policy right there. My ACME virtual private network connections. This is the policy that is in play. I'm gonna right click here and take a look at the properties. You can see that it is enabled, which means by default, we're gonna use this policy to decide. So now that I have configured the relationship between my Radius server and my domain controller, what I need to do is go and play with the Radius client, which is my RAS server. That's where my VPN is going to live. I'm going to reduce this and head over there. To the RAS we go. Okay, now in this particular situation, I have not done anything. I wanted you to see the configuration of the RAS server with VPN, so I have not installed that as a role. I'm going to do that right now. Notice though, again, this is not part of the domain. It's not necessary and also this may not be the actual device I want to use to, to work with my VPN. But for the purposes of this lab, this is perfect. Let's go and install that role that will allow us to create the VPN. I'm going to go to add a role based installation and oh, I skipped past that. Notice that I've got two IP addresses, my inside and my outside, and it is successfully finding the server name locally. I'm gonna hit next, and what I'm after here is the remote access role right there. It'll come with a series of management features, hit next, and what I'm really after is this guy right here, the VPN. Now, I'm not using it as a router or a web application pro pro uh, proxy, so I'm simply gonna hit that one checkbox, and away we go. All the tools that I need, and I'm gonna hit install. I'm gonna pause the video for a short sec to let this installation complete and be right back. There we go, with that role installed, I'm ready to configure my VPN via routing and remote access. Now there's a configuration wizard in here, a welcome wizard that lets you do some fairly common configurations. I choose to go straight to the snap-in. I'm gonna to go to my routing and remote access snap-in under tools, and the first thing I need to do is right-click and turn this thing on. I'm going to click on my server. I'll do that again one more time here. I'm going to right click and configure and enable routing and remote access and up comes a wizard. What I'm going to do is a custom configuration because I'm looking for VPN access only. As you see, there's a whole series of combinations that we can do with respect to this role and all I'm looking for in this particular lab is my VPN access. I'm going to hit next and finish and it gives me a chance to start the service and I'm looking at a fresh configuration of my routing and remote access services. This is just gonna take a second to start and I am now ready to do some configuration. So what I'm gonna do now is configure my VPN. I'm gonna right click on my server name and I'm gonna go under the properties option. And in the property options, I have a series of tabs. The one I'm looking for first off is security. You'll see the default authentication mechanism is Windows. Well, I've built this wonderful Radius server 
so I can use it. I want to use my cool and fancy shiny radius server. I'm going to hit configure and it now gives me a chance to add the server. Now remember what I'm doing here, this RAS is a radius client. I need now to tell the VPN where to get its authentication from. I'm going to hit the add button and I'm going to use the server IP. This is my NPS server, my radius server, and I'm going to give it a shared secret. Remember, this is the shared secret that I configured with the RAS server, the authentication server, and that happened to be secret pass. Shh, don't tell anybody. Secret pass. Very, very simple, and I would recommend you do something way more complicated than that, but for the purposes of this lab, we're good to go. I'm going to click OK, and now it's checking with that radius server to make sure it can talk, and as soon as it's finished, that OK button should go away. Now here, I also could actually configure radius accounting. This is a cool tool. One of the reasons that we would consider using radius is because we have this granular auditing. I'm going to click configure as well. Same thing, I get to add the server. And uh, of course, I could use the FQDN here as well, but I'm simply going to use the IP address shared secret secret pass. There we go. There we go. So it's going to verify with an OK. It's going to take a little second here and it's doing some work here again, confirming that it has connectivity to that radius server. That's a good sign. Now take a quick peek here. We're going to come back to this. Um, the default configuration for our VPN is point-to-point -point protocol, point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, PPTP. That's not exactly the most secure one out there. We're going to come back and enhance that security right here. But for now, I want to get it working and then we will enhance it from there. I now can simply click the apply button. I'm going to give it a chance to get those settings. And I'm going to change the tabs and I'm going to create a static address pool for my VPN clients. Settings are good to go. Before I leave, I need to click the IPv4 tab. Now, one of the roles, the jobs of this VPN server is to hand out addresses to VPN clients who want connectivity. That pool of addresses has to be from the domain environment. Now, I could use DHCP if I had a DHCP server con con configured. I do not. I'm going to have this VPN server hand out a series of static addresses from a specific pool. I'm going to click add. Now, how many do I need? I need as many addresses to support the number of clients that I need, including this particular server. So my address scheme is a 10 network on a slash 24. I've started low. I'm just arbitrarily going to start giving this addresses from the, I'm gonna give it from the 100 range. So I'll know that all my VPN clients will start at 100. All my domain workstations will be below that. Where does this pool end? Let's go 110. So I'll have 11 possible addresses. The server's going to get one. The rest are going to go to clients and we'll be able to verify that when we're done. And I'm going to hit apply again. Let it do its configuring. And then we're going to close this up and do some testing. Good to go. I'm going to hit OK and let it finish its configuration. And now I'm ready to test everybody. I'm going to go and verify whether this works. So we've completed the connection between the radius server and the domain controller. We've completed the configuration between the radius authentication server and the radius client, which is our RAS. And then we've built a virtual private network that will allow us to use our client to site VPN. So we're ready to rock. Let's go to my workstation. I have a remote Windows workstation ready to go. This is a simple Windows 10 machine. It is not domain joint, which is typical for this. This is a client to site VPN. Characteristically, I'm using a non-domain client to connect to my domain resources. I'm going to verify right out of the gate here that I can actually talk to the public IP. Now, I'm going to ping my friend at uh, 0 0.254, that is this interface, everybody. What I'm verifying is that this guy can hit this particular interface. This would be my public interface. Yes, I have used a private address, but I'm emulating a public interface. So as long as my client can get there, ideally, my RAS server is going to talk to my radius server and all the magic is going to happen. Let's see if we have some magic. The way I'm going to test this is I'm going to move to my 
network and internet settings, bottom right hand coordinate system tray, a regular click takes me up to access this option called VPN. I'm going to add a custom VPN connection. I'm going to select the built-in option, which is the first and only provider that I have with Windows 10. And I'm going to give this a user-friendly connection name such as Acme VPN. Now, characteristically, this can be a, a server name if, if I'm sharing domain or DNS services. However, in this case, I'm going to simply use the IP address of the outside interface of my particular server that I just confirmed I should be able to talk to. Now, automatic means it's going to scroll through all of these encapsulation protocols. By default, I know it's going to be PPTP, point-to-point -point tunnel protocol. And so I'm going to select this. So it goes there first. Now, I could select and type in my username and password here but for security I'm going to uncheck this box because I don't want this box remembering those credentials. I'm going to force my user to type in those credentials every single time they connect to the VPN just in the event that this particular host gets into the wrong hands. I'm going to click save. Now before I can go and try my connection I have a few other things I've got to do. I'm going to pop back into my network and internet settings and I'm going to click on ethernet and go to my adapter options. You'll see that when I create this particular VPN, I created a special WAN mini port. And in there, I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to the properties, and I'm going to confirm the configuration elements that it needs. It's going to connect to the server at 172.170.254. And I'm going to click on options, and you'll see that I have some granular settings here. The one that I want is my security tab. You'll see that it's going to be using PPTP by default, and I'm going to select the extensible authentication protocol. That's the one that I configured on Radius, and that is going to get me in the door with my domain credentials. I have the ability to customize some of the properties, but the defaults are fine. You have a couple other tools here, should you wish, but that's the tab that I need. I'm going to click OK, and now I'm going to go back, and I'm going to see if I can connect to this VPN. Should be sitting here ready to go. I simply need to hit connect. And that's a good sign. I've been challenged with domain credentials. Now remember, way back in the beginning of the video, I talked about this thing called a realm. This is the, this, these are the credentials that we need to connect to my domain. That realm looks like this. It's my first, it's my, it's my username, so in this case, first initial last name, at symbol, followed by the domain. And we could verify this in the properties of this user, but it's corp.acme. Dot com. That's the realm that I left at, in its default state. I'm going to use my domain credentials now because what I'm asking for is the VPN server to check with the radius server who will confirm my domain credentials with the domain controller. I'm going to click OK. And just like that, look at how fast that was. That was brilliant. I love it when a VPN comes together. Let's go take a look and see what's happening here under the hood. I'm going to do an IP config. Let's try this. IP config. There we go. Look at this. I have a new address, 10101010101. Where did that come from? That came from my RAS server. Remember when I created that static pool? I know that I've got a verification of an address here. And I can actually now use this connection to access the domain environment. Let's go back and take a look at what's going on here on the RAS. I'm going to go take a look at my network interfaces. Specifically, I want to see my remote access clients. There it is right there. My Acme is Tberg. This is showing my domain credentials. Now here, let me show you another way to do this. I'm going to go back to this PC. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to disconnect it. Okay, now I'm going to use a different um, name configuration to sign in. I'm going to hit connect again. There's my option. And remember, I could use the realm. I could also use the net BIOS of the domain followed by my username. I do need that net BIOS, which was Acme Tberg. I'm going to type in this password again, and I'm equally quickly connected. Fantastic. And if I go back to my RAS server, let's take a look here. Oh, no, I didn't want to go there. I wanted to go to Yes, I'm sorry. There it is. There's my network. And let me do a refresh here. And you can see that I have used my domain credentials and I've been connected for about 12 seconds. So we have successfully configured our connection. And I'm happy to say that we're in good shape. Now, one thing I, I did mention that I want to do is I want to enhance some of the security. Let me disconnect this client.
and I'm going to go back here to my local server and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go back to those properties. Now remember, one of the things that I may want to do is enhance the security over the default PPTP encapsulation. What I'm going to do here is add a custom IPsec policy for L2T, layer 2 tunneling protocol. And I'm going to click on the checkbox, which allows me to create a new pre-shared key. And I'm going to call this, I don't know, something that is distinct. It's different than the shared secret that I was using to authenticate with the Radius server. This pre-shared key is going to allow the uh, VPN to create an encapsulation tunnel for my VPN. Now, I'm going to click apply and I'm going to click OK, and it's going to remind me I need to right click and I need to restart that service. Remember, fairly common thing. So it doesn't do it for me, but it reminded me that that particular change forces me to do a restart of that service. There we go. I'm going to go back to my VPN. Now I'm going to go back here and make those changes on the encapsulation request, my WAN mini port. I'm going to pop into the properties and I'm going to go back to my security. Now remember, I had initially selected PPTP by default. I'm going to now change that to uh, layer two tunneling protocol with IPsec. Click on advanced setting and it wants that pre-shared key. I called it Troy Pass. That was the password that I used. This is establishing the encapsulation through which I'm going to do the VPN in the, the VPN authentication. That's what's going on here. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to click OK. And now it's using a more secure encapsulation protocol. I'm going to hit connect and let's do this one more time using my domain credentials and see if we get some gold. There we did. OK, took a hair second, but I'm now connected with L2TP instead of PPTP, which I can again verify by taking a look at my remote access clients right here. Lots of really good things in that video, everybody. I hope you were able to follow along successfully. Um, just to answer one question I know you're going to ask, yes, that works exactly the same way with a Windows 11 machine. The configuration of the VPN on the Windows 11, exactly the same process. You need to set that custom VPN, change those mini port properties, and it should connect exactly the same way we saw with Windows 10. So again, I hope that helped everybody. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Stay safe.